Good morning. And welcome to worship. It's All Saints Sunday. Martin Luther reminded us that um, All Saints Sunday is not just a remembrance of those who have gone before us, and today we will especially commemorate those who have died who are beloved to us in the last year. But Luther also reminded us that we're all saints of God, that our faithfulness uh, helps us join that communion, that great cloud of witnesses. So I'm delighted you're all here today. Um, some of the usual All Saints things that we do, we have, are not doing this morning um, because of the pandemic, but we've put lots of extra candles around um, and we'll have a time of commemoration um, a little bit later in the service. Um, just to remind you, is there anything I need to tell them about the tricky tray? Kim Setzer is up in the balcony. has a prize that they like to be bring in late, that's fine. They can drop it off Thursday night after 6. Excellent. So Thursday night after 6, if you haven't already dropped your um, donations off for the tricky tray, you can drop them off on Thursday night. They'll be setting up. There are poinsettia order forms in... There aren't... Have they all gone? Oh, okay. My, my. Uh, the 8 o'clockers seem to have taken all the points idea order forms, or maybe some of you have, but in the narthex on the table, there were some. Double check to see that they're there. Um, the deadline, the very firm deadline of that is November 28th. The, our flower supplier, we had to change because, unfortunately, the, the gentleman who was running Hickory Grove passed away a few years ago, and the new guy is, is quite a hoot. Um, so if you, <laughs> if you can please have your order forms to me by the 28th, and if you plan on mailing them in, please mail them in before that so that um, I can be sure to get Lenny his numbers and I don't have to suffer too much for that. Uh, they're, they're beautiful poinsettias, though. His are really, we, we actually went out to the greenhouse and checked them out, and they're, they're really beautiful, so um, we just do what we can. All right, finally, um, the sign-up sheet for the Wishlist Wonderland. Uh, we're not doing the Breakfast with Santa this year, but we are doing this cool Wishlist Wonderland um, thing, the, the, um, an event. The uh, information about it is in your bulletin, um, but the sign-up form is in the narthex. There's a nice little display from our friends in the Chris Ed Committee, um, so we thank that. Melissa has an announcement. Okay. Excellent. So um, if you don't want to sign up here or you have family or friends who wish to sign up, we'll have a Google form um, coming up very soon on our Facebook page, so you can just check that out as well. And with that, I'm going to uh, invite the handbells forward. We are going to hear the handbells for the first time back in the sanctuary. So um, they're going to come forward and offer a voluntary, and then we'll continue with the confession and forgiveness.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one common, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us peace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people will be taken away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly the 24th Psalm. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world uh, those who dwell therein. For the Lord has found... Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in God's holy place. Those are in his hands and to the heart who do not swear on God's being. They shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from God of their salvation. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of strong. 
Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? True. A reading from the Revelation of John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. All, he said. Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Mother Teresa was a nun who devoted her life to serving the poorest of the poor. She died in 1997 after spent, spending 40 years ministering to the homeless, the destitute, and the dying in the slums of Calcutta, India. The religious order that she founded, the Missionary Sisters of Charity, now sponsors 350 centers for ministry to the poor and the sick in all parts of the world. A recent book entitled Mother Teresa, Come Be My Light, is the story of her life, including her inner spiritual life, told through a collection of letters. Someone once asked Mother Teresa what it was that inspired her to such a saintly life and work. And she responded by saying, I'm not a saint. I'm only doing what Christ requires of me. Well, on the Christian calendar, November 1st is the Festival of All Saints, and we commemorate that on the Sunday nearest to it. So what does it mean to be a saint? 
Usually we think of saints as being exemplary Christians, holy people, almost perfect, able to resist troubles and temptations and sin, able to do extraordinary things in service to God and to humanity. But actually, we are all called to be saints. That is, all of us can be faithful people of God, individuals through whom God is able to work. A great Christian teacher once said that saints are saints not because they are good, but because they point to something greater than themselves. Saints point to God. Saints are living witnesses to the power and the glory and the goodness and the love of God. Sainthood is, we might say, three-dimensional. It has a past, a present, and a future. And so let me suggest that we explore each of those three dimensions briefly in turn. First of all, the great and good Christians of the past are indeed saints. People like Matthew and Mary, Stephen and Paul, Augustine and Monica, Francis of Assisi and Lady Claire, John Huss and Teresa of Avila, Martin Luther and Katharina von Bora, Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Mother Teresa. We, name, we may not be familiar with all their names right now, but it is well worth getting to know them and to recognize them as models for us to follow in the living of our lives. The first saints whom the church singled out for commemoration were the martyrs, those who were faithful even unto death. Later, those who had been especially noteworthy in life came to be venerated as saints as well. They were remembered on specific days of the year, often their birthdays or the dates of their death when, as the church professed, they were born into the kingdom of God. The names of some saints were known, but others were forever anonymous. And so since the third century, the festival of all saints has been observed. It's sort of like the tomb of the unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery. It honors the lives and sacrifices of those whose names are known to God alone. These special saints can be models for our lives and for our faith. But in a way, all the faithful departed are the saints of God. We have fellowship with them across the divide of death, and from them we can learn what we might become. Secondly, the present dimension of sainthood is the call that we all have to be faithful. We, too, are saints. You may know that in the early church, the followers of Christ were not called Christians, but rather saints. For instance, at the beginning of his letters, St. Paul often says that he is writing to the saints who are in such and such a church, Ephesus or Galatia or Philippi, and are faithful in Christ Jesus. That means that sainthood is not so much a matter of extraordinary moral achievement as it is a matter of our having been chosen to be God's beloved children. It is by God's spirit that the believer is made holy. In Matthew's gospel, we read the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount. They speak of the kind of people who are favored by God. As such, these sayings about blessedness, about happiness, about holiness, are a guide to sainthood, that is, to a life which strives to be faithful to God and in which we can grow in grace. The present tense of sainthood is that God loves and blesses those who seek to follow God and to live under God's care. And finally, the future. The motive of Christianity is to keep us moving into God's future. And the message of the gospel is that there's a new day 
coming. God's kingdom will come, and God's will shall indeed be done on earth just as it is done in heaven. Someday we, like the saints of old, will have God's love completely revealed to us. These, then, are the three dimensions of sainthood. We pattern our lives on the examples of God's great saints of old. We live our lives as saints, God's faithful people in the presence, and we direct our lives toward God's coming kingdom. We are all the saints, and we experience our sainthood as a call and as a blessing. Amen. May it be so. With the whole church, we let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. O oh God of the Pilgrim's Way, we give thanks for those in generations past who have been examples for us of God's love at work in the world. As we pray, we know that we are surrounded by this great rejoicing cloud of witnesses. Yet even as we name these holy ancestors, we thank God for others whose names we never knew or have forgotten, who showed us the meaning of life in Christ. We remember especially those beloved to us who have died in the last year. Jake Fink. Robert Crome Jr. Shirley Laubach. Dorothy Lurch. Elwood Longenbach. Frank Orlowski Sr. Leonard Siegfried. Tracy Sigley. Alex Ulry. Christ says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you will find rest for your souls. Holy God, we honor these, our ancestors in faith and members of our family. We, too, seek to do your will. Guide us. We, too, desire to be your servants. Strengthen us. We, too, long to know you clearly. Teach us. And in time, bring us to our eternal home of peace and joy. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and wiped tears away. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. We also pray that your Holy Spirit continues to accompany our congregational leadership, call committee, and pastoral candidate as they discern your will for all of us. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, we praise you for abundant harvests and the goodness of creation. Create communities of care for your earth so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O oh God. God of healing, we give you thanks for health care workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way, especially Sandy, Barbara, Gladys, Dorothy, Bob, Jerry, and Ginny. Hear us, O oh God. 
God of justice, we praise you for feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, communion assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Hear us, O oh God. Here we offer prayers for those near and dear to us, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. God of the ages, we give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. Hear us, O oh God. God, our protection and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Jake, Robert, Shirley, Dorothy, Elwood, Frank, Lenny, Tracy, Alex, and all the saints, with the choirs of angel and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, our power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come. The table is ready. The congregation may be seated. As you take and look upon the bread, remember that this is the body of Christ given for you. As you take the cup, remember that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Signed and sealed by the Holy Spirit, we are Christ's message of love for this troubled world, written by the same sender. May Christ, who makes saints of sinners, who has transformed those we remember today, raise and strengthen us that we may transform the world. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen.
peace. Christ is with you.